What I wanted to do in this video is show you or explain to you exactly what is going on when we start working with a, a REST interface and a JSON result or response. Um, so the first thing that we have is we have your, uh, let's just say this is a, an Android application that's running on our phone. So this, this is our, our telephone. And then over here we have our web server. And on the web server we have what is commonly referred to as a REST uh, page or a REST uh, protocol that's sitting over here. Now what this really is is it is a URL that you're going to point to. So let's just say that um, this is our, let's say it's HTTPS, and we'll say uh, myserve.com slash uh, test. So this is the, the URL that we're going to call. And what happens is when we call this thing from our Android application, this web page does something. It goes out and, and collects our, the data that we need. So once it gets the data, it needs to reply back to the Android application. Well, the problem is there's a couple different ways to, to respond back. One is using XML. The, the problem with XML is it is very long. Um, it, it, it's got a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of air. Um, it takes a lot of processing power to, to un, uncompile this thing or unpackage it so that we can actually make useful um, uh, data out of it so that we can actually work with it in our application. So what happened is someone came up and had the great idea of using a JSON object. And, and all this is is a string. Um, when we start passing this data from the web server back to our application, there's no way for us to really tell the application that we're passing back an array. Um, every programming language refers to array, an array as a different, syntactically they're different. They're, there's just not any way for me to say, hey, here's an array. So the concept between a JSON object is that it comes in and defines a string and then that string has got a specific format. Um, so, so basically I could have a, a field name and then I could have a colon and then I could have its value. And I'm not trying to show you the exact syntax for JSON. I'm, I'm just trying to explain the, the flow here. Um, and then we could have a semicolon and then I could have the next field name a colon, and then its value, and so forth. I could keep doing this. What I'm doing here is I am defining how I'm going to send you variables back. So I'm, I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to give you a name, a colon, a value, and a semicolon. That represents one variable. So this is a variable. Now, if I were to want to send you an array back, maybe I would come in here and I'd say, okay, well, if I send you an array, I'm going to do a curly bracket, and I'm going to say field one colon value. I'm going to do the same thing that we had, field two. And then when we get done, I'm going to, and that's semicolon, and then I'm going to give you a col close curly bracket, and then I'm going to open another curly bracket, and I'm going to give you the next array. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get you the entire array filled up. But the big point here is that the web server is actually returning a string back to your application. Now, when we get ready to compile our array over here, we obviously, we don't want to have to loop through and build this big long string because we have an array that we're working with in our code inside of the, the REST side in the web server. So what inside the web server, we call some JSON function and pass it our uh, array. So we pass it the array that we want to return, and then it returns back our new JSON object. So 
what we do here is we then echo the string that looks something like this back to your Android application. Well, then what happens inside the Android application is that it has a string that gets the response. So now the, the string that it's holding is the response from the web server. But again, this is a big, long string. I would like to put it into an array so that I can work with it in my code. So in most all programming languages, there is some way for me to say that I want AR to equal JSON.parse. You know what? And this is I'm just writing this, but every language has got a different way of doing this. And I'm going to give it or in our case, we called it string. So we're going to erase this here. And we are going to tell it to pass it in string. Now, what happens when this is done, AR is going to actually be an array. And by that, what I mean is we will have AR, and then it will have the first field name. In our case, was field 1. So this is field 1. And then it's going to have a value, and inside that value is going to be value in, in our above example. Um, and actually, this wouldn't be here. but So that's going to equal value, and then AR field 2, I don't know why that's doing that, is equal to value 2. So all that's going on here is we, we are taking our Android application, we're making a response to the web server, the web server then packages up an array internally, it then turns around and calls this JSON object here to tell it to build a string, so again this results in a string, it passes that string back to our Java app or our Android application, in this case it could be an iPhone application, whatever it happens to be, it passes that string back to our application and then our application turns around and converts that string to an array or to variables, whatever it happens to be. And then that lets us, inside of our application, more easily work with the an array or a set of variables instead of a big long string that we've got to turn around and parse. So JSON is just a way to turn an array into a string and then to turn a string back into an array between two disconnected uh, server and clients.